Right then guys, some of you, or at least the regulars, may be slightly surprised that you've not instantly been greeted with my ugly mug. But today we're going to be taking a look at the ProLimaTech Super Mega CPU cooler. And I wanted to bring you in straight away for a look at the cooler. But I am still here, so don't worry. Do you know what I mean? I'm just I'm over here. Anyway, uh, yeah, to have a uh, look at the Super Mega. Now, the Super Mega technically is, as you can see, there's uh, a split down the middle. It's twin tower, but not in the kind of way that we'd expect with uh, the other twin tower coolers. And what they've done is they've beefed this, they beefed this one up. And essentially we've got, the, the, the biggest thing I can see the difference is that we've got copper down the sides now. Now I'm trying to do the, if I show you that way around you'll be able to see. I can also bring you in for a closer look. You can see that we've got the two strips of copper here and they're on both sides. Now obviously we've, uh, there was the Prolimatech uh, Mega Halos and stuff like this and this is pretty much meant to be Prolimatech's uh, top of the range um, heatsink. A lot of people look at towers like this because maybe they don't want to follow uh, the sheep and buy the twin tower coolers that the other manufacturers make or maybe they want to have larger RAM or you know for whatever reasons at the end of the day options and choices um, are there for everyone. So we'll give this a good test in our normal overclock 3D uh, testing fashion. It's going to go in our rig with the 950, our static rig. But I'll give you a good look. You can see the one, two, three, four, five, six heat pipes there at the bottom. And then we've got a nice surface there. It's not completely uh, mirrored. It's incredibly smooth, but you can still see some machining marks. If I get it down so that you can actually have a see. I'm going to bring you in so you can have a look. I'm trying to balance this all out. There we go. Get a bit of light on it. You can see it's not completely mirrored. You can still see some machine marks. And then the copper strips down the side. I do quite like the look of it though. I've not got anything against any of the coolers. But what I'll do, while we've got you in, because I'm trying to find a way that we uh, can have a good balance of uh, length in the videos. We can still have a laugh. And... Um, you still get everything that you want to know. Now, uh, I've got the mounts here for the Intel mounts. That's 775, 1156, 1155 and 1366. Now something I did notice, which I was quite impressed with, which the uh, Mega Holmes doesn't come with, is it comes with an extra set of screws. So that you can, the black screws here, um, I'll show you. We've got a set of black ones. There are actually stronger springs on those than the standard silver ones. But what I'll do is I'll show you quickly how you would get this ready to go on your motherboard. And what we need to do is start with the back plate. And then you get four of these small fittings. And then pretty much you put them through the right spot on your back plate. For your socket. Now where I'm doing 1366 I've put mine right in the back. Now I'm probably not going to be able to do this without it falling out. Oh, but we'll have a go. Now we did have a go. Anyway. Shouldn't really try and do all four at once but I'm just trying to do it for the video. Anyway. If I bring you in a little bit more. There we go. Right, and then once you've got those in, I need to move this one out a bit. Because I've not put it in the 1366 hole. There you go. Right. So you can see that I've got all four of the um, clips through. And then you get some of these, and they are very small. Put it on my hand so that you can see. Tiny little rubber grommets. And what you do is you push these over the top. And then it stops the uh, small silver bits, which have got the threads in for the top part of the uh, mountain, from falling off. Uh, and it also gives you a rubber point 
for where it goes and contacts the motherboard. Now, essentially, what we need to do now is uh, imagine that we've put that through the motherboard because I've not got a motherboard loose here I can show you with. Imagine we've got the motherboard over that now and through your normal mounting holes for your socket you can just see these threads. So that's on there, you've got it on your motherboard, lovely jubbly. And then what you do is you screw these parts. Now it's all really simple to be quite honest with you. You can um, follow the instructions really easily as well, but I just thought I'd show you quickly. I'm just unscrewing the other parts of the heatsink at the moment, all the other parts of the mounts, because they've all come all screwed up. I'm just unscrewing them quickly, just so I can show you. Bear in mind I've got to take this all off again before I put it in the test rig. But you screw them all on. And I'm just going to do it quick, it's just as a visual guide for you. Right, so bear in mind, all this would be above the motherboard now. So you get it that far. Then you put your uh, heatsink parts on over the top. This is part of the uh, retention. And then you put the clips on like that. Now I'm only going to do a couple of these because like I said I'm just doing this so I can give you a visual representation of what it should roughly look like. And then if I bring the heatsink in, basically on the heatsink there, there's two barbs. You can see there's two recesses. And on this part, if I can get it actually in. Is it going to focus? No, it's focusing on that. Right, there we go. Right, you can see that there's two bits there. And basically, that goes over the heatsink and then locks into place. And then essentially, all you would then do is put that on top of your CPU and all of this over the top there like that. I'll just put that there so I can show you. And then you choose the screws that you want. You either have the silver normal ones or you can have the tighter black ones. And then you just screw them down. Obviously you'll have your heat sink on by this point. And that's it. Everything obviously would need to be up tight. Now remember what I said, this is just a visual guide just to uh, give you a rough idea of what's going on. Because I have um, heard of a few people getting lost with these, doing them wrong. But if you, read the, uh, if you watch what I've done and then read the manual as well, you should be perfectly fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this mounted into the um, there we go I'm going to get this mounted into the uh, test rig now and then we'll crack on with some testing uh, just to let you know I will be doing uh, testing this um, with two Sigma Tech 120mm fans because it does come with clips to be able to install two lots of fans so I'll use both and uh, because um, it's not got any type of fan resistors or anything that comes with it because you do need to buy fans uh, you know, with the heatsink, they don't come with it. Uh, because of that, I'll be running the fans at 12 volts. So it will be a best case scenario with the Sigma Tech fans if you run two. But anyway, I'm going to get this in the test rig now and we'll see how we get on. Right then, I just wanted to show you the cooler in the system. I've got it all installed. I did want to say to you though that um, it, the fan, if you run a pair, you will be able to get full height RAM in, in front of that fan, or at least on this motherboard, because obviously motherboards can have small differences, but on the UD3R you will easily be able to run the two fans and still get full height RAM in if you're just running three sticks because obviously you just run them in the white slots on the gigas or the red slots on the uh, ASUS's. Um so yeah just just be aware but at the end of the day you probably could get away with like moving the uh, fan up or something just like the noctuous but for the sake of argument 
on this board it does fit. Please don't ask me if it will fit specific motherboards because obviously I can't test everything. Right then guys, I've got you in my hands. I just want to bring you down here quickly and show you the uh, room temperature. That's 21.1 there. When I took my temperatures it was 21 degrees dead. Currently testing at 4 gigahertz at 1.25 as we always do. Prime there is running, has been running for uh, just over 30 minutes now. When I took my temperatures I took them at 73, 71, 71, 68 uh, and that gave us an average temperature of 70.75 degrees C. Take the delta temperature of 21 off that and that, or sorry, the ambient temperature of uh, 21 off that and that gives us a 49.75 degrees delta temperature. Right, that was nice and quick. Let's move on to 4.2 gigahertz testing. Right then guys, you can see the temperature, the room temperature there says 21.4. When I took my test it was 21.3. You can see that we're testing at 4.2 gigahertz now and it's at 1.35 volts in the BIOS. You can see Prime has been running there, well it's been running there for 30 minutes. Now you can see the temperatures. When I took my results it was 84, 83, 81, 79 giving us an average temperature of 81.75 degrees. And then uh, the room temperature when I took my results was 21.3 degrees. If you take that away from the average that gives us a 60.45 degrees delta temperature. Right then guys, the Prolimitec Super Mega. Uh, basically, as you've seen, I've tested it with the Zigmatech fans. The Zigmatech fans are quite a popular fan, they're not stupidly expensive, they do uh, move a good amount of air. Uh, quite a lot of places do use them as a part of their bundles when they sell these heat sinks as well. So it's quite a fair test. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, people are going to ask what about these fans, what about these fans, and the idea is, is that you use this as a base to draw your own conclusions on what you could do differently with different fans. At the end of the day, if I start testing with uh, one, you know, a lot of different fans, there will always be somebody else going, what about this, what about this, and I, I'm sorry, but there's no way in how I'm going to do reviews with like 20 different types of fans. So, uh, whenever we've had heat sinks in the past that didn't come with fans, I've always used the Sigma Tech fans and I'll probably carry on just as a nice, you know what I mean, easy grab, they work um, and it keeps it fair then. Uh, quite surprisingly, like I said, I've used uh, a pair for push-pull um, and I've run them both at 12 volts as well, so these temperatures, obviously if you wanted to run them quieter because they're not the, you know, most quiet fans in the world, they do have a bit of a fan noise. Um, if you wanted to run them quieter to try and keep your uh, system levels kind of like noise levels down and obviously your temperatures would get worse. Now you've seen the temperatures uh, from before um, and to be quite honest with you the uh, 4 gigahertz at 1.25 volts was a, uh, a reasonably good result as well. Uh, a 70.75 average isn't the best but at the same time it's not uh, terrible either. Um, obviously with the uh, 4.2 gigahertz it did then go up to a, a, a 10 degrees basically. Um, so if you're aiming for around 4 gigahertz uh, on your uh, 950 for example and use around 1.25 volts because don't forget if you need more volts that's then going to mean that your temperatures are going to go up as well. It's not a bad cooler. Uh, it is still with the f second fan on quite close to the RAM on the other side, so you still need to be careful with the components that you're buying. But at the same time, it's not a terrible cooler. It's definitely a marked improvement on the uh, Prolimatech uh, Mega Halen because uh, it's quite beefy. You've got those copper strips. Um, it's a very nice cooler.
the downfall comes when you start to look at the price because it comes in around the retailers in the UK it's about 57 58 pound and then what you also you need to factor in is the fact that you're going to need to buy fans so obviously you can buy cheap fans but let's just say just to keep things fair you're going to spend five pound on each fan so that means you've spent 60 pounds on it then which puts you in the territory of lots of other coolers just like the Noctua as well so you really need to decide whether you're buying this for uh, to be different whether you like the look of it whether you're buying it for you know so you can run big ram uh, which to be quite honest with you ram doesn't get hot this is something i don't understand ram really doesn't get hot unless you're really ravaging it like pushing the overclocks to the limits or uh, over vaulting it like nobody's business so it is a very nice cooler um, I'm not going to say it's a bad cooler the mount can be a bit funny uh, I'm very glad on this compared to the uh, Mega Halons that they've changed the screws not only do you get the ones with the extra clamp so you can put some extra force on you know uh, pressure on the, when you mount it so you've got that extra bit of contact there uh, but the ones with the Mega Halons uh, they, the heads on them were really bad and they kind of you ended up with metal dust over your motherboard if you removed it in and out quite a lot and they, they, the, the metal that they were made from was terrible uh, but these, they're very sturdy uh, and a number two screwdriver, is it number two that I use? Uh, no, it's a number one uh, Phillips screwdriver, it goes in there lovely, it doesn't slip so that's a, a marked improvement to that compared with the uh, Mega Halems so all in all, uh, it's a, uh, a good performing cooler, but just slightly shy of an amazing cooler. Um, to be quite honest with you, as things stand at the moment, I really don't see, you've got the Silver Arrow and the D14 are like the top of the pile. Um, and as of yet, with the coolers that I've tested, I've yet to see one that can get up there on that top slot as well. But this is quite a happy, down on that kind of like number two kind of like second rung down so to speak uh, but it does carry quite a high price tag once you factor in the fans um, so yeah all in all it's not bad uh, but it's not brilliant uh, is it the cooler for you? only you can tell <laughs> anyways guys this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you out